This is going to be a spooky rehousing. Hey, remember these? Well, we've increased our line of holiday spiders to include Halloween spiders. There are many designs to choose from. They make great decorations for your desk or hang them from a window or your rearview mirror as an awesome sun catcher. And don't forget, the holidays are just around the corner. We've got a large variety of Christmas spiders to choose from. Supplies are limited, so click on the link in the description below to visit the Etsy store, Busy Bee Designs, to order yours before they're all gone. Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Today I am doing my spooky rehouse. Why is it spooky? Well, it's not going to start out very spooky, but I do have to um, rehouse my Brocky Pelma Vegans. They've been kept in these pixie boxes and they have far outgrown them, so they're ready for a new enclosure. Uh, the next one is my Ephibopus Waterman. And this one has grown quite fast and it has also outgrown the pixie box and it's ready for a new enclosure and uh, commonly known as the emerald skeleton so I guess that's a little bit spooky there um, but this one is truly spooky uh, and, and all this webbing in here is my heteroscodra maculata which is commonly known as the Togo starburst baboon now this is probably the only tarantula in my collection that really worries me and that's why this is a spooky rehousing and I'll talk more a little bit about it but let's get on with the rehousing all right so let's start out with the mildest first and as with all my rehousings I got my catch cups ready and I got all my little tools and everything that I need in order to accomplish this rehousing so here we go um, I'm gonna start out with my um, Brachypelma vegans and Brachypelma vegans are known for having a kind of a nasty disposition um, most of your Brachypelmas tend to be pretty docile and uh, these are one of the few that will probably give you a threat posture and uh, are known for hair flicking but um, that's just what they do that's uh, the uh, Brachypelma vegans so um, they're beautiful tarantula they're mostly black and have a reddish abdomen as you can see right there and you can tell that he has pretty much overstayed his welcome in this pixie box so he is long overdue to be moved into a new enclosure so let's go ahead and do that I'll probably get a threat posture though there's some hair flicking right there and oh there we go it's turning around doesn't want to go doing a whole lot of hair flicking all right, no threat posture yet, but it's being very, very stubborn. And probably because it walked to the edge and didn't find anything to step on, so it's decided to hold its ground and it's not going to go any further until I give it something to step on. So there we go. All right, oh, and it goes right underneath. So let's get you onto the cork bark there. Very, very stubborn more hair flicking yeah, I can tell I'm gonna be real itchy after this all right come on buddy and I haven't sexed these yet I keep saying he but I don't know the sex of it all right it's being very stubborn there you go grab the cork bark all right now we're home All right, so beautiful species, and he's trying to find his way underneath that cork bark there. Very, very quick to kick hairs, but no threat posture. And whoop, a little bit of web there. Well, there's a good look at it, but <laughs> it's really trying to get under that cork bark. So I'm gonna leave it alone and let it go ahead and settle in and um, it will dig itself a nice little burrow underneath that cork bark. 
Okay, Brocky Pelma Vegans number two. And this one looks like it is in pre molt. It's already got a lot of hairs missing on its abdomen. Not quite as dark as the other one. I think this one is one instar behind the other one. Um, next molt, it'll probably be nice and black and get that reddish abdomen. So this one still looks a little bit brownish. So let's see this guy's disposition and see if we can get it over without too much trouble. Okay, stubbornness. Oh, that was easy. Nice, big fatty there. All right, so I didn't get a threat posture or anything on this one. It's being very relaxed, very calm. Hopefully it likes its new home, and uh, I'm sure it probably will outgrow it relatively quickly, so this is just a temporary thing until it grows a little bit bigger. Okay, so the next one is Brachypelma Waterman, and that one is commonly known as the Emerald Skeleton. And I haven't really seen it much since I've gotten it, and that is because they are a burrowing species, and um, it was burrowed for a very long time until it got too big for the enclosure, and now I can see it. And there's a look at it right there. You can see it in the corner. And it's a beautiful, beautiful tarantula. Um, this is the most I usually see of it, is just the, the legs there. Um, the abdomen is supposed to be a beautiful emerald color, but I don't usually see that because it's usually curled up in a ball like that. So it's definitely ready for a rehouse. And this one does have a tendency to be quite defensive. It will throw up a threat posture and um, it is very prone to bolting, which is why I decided to use this little tub here so that in case I have to catch it, um, because it probably will try to bolt out of the enclosure. So um, hopefully it won't, hopefully it'll be an easy rehouse, but I doubt it. I think it's probably going to try to bolt out of here as soon as it can. So let's see if we can do this calmly. I have had it go just bolt right out during a feeding one time and I don't expect any different here and it's being really stubborn because it likes this little corner there so I need to try to coax it out and hopefully whoop, there we go hopefully it will find a secure spot in its new enclosure and not try to bolt out of here I really don't want to have to chase it around. Come on, little guy. There you go. All right, there is that beautiful green abdomen. Whoa, 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 there we go. Trying to bolt. Better get that catch cup handy. All right, let's see if I can pull this out. Nope, nope, nope. You go right back in. Go back in. Come on. Let me have this. Whew. Oh, there we go. Didn't have to use the catch cup, but again, we didn't get to see very much of it. Just a little bit before it decided it was too unsecure and tried to bolt. All right, let's see if we can get it to go down. Spread out a little bit for us, there we go. All right, so there is that beautiful abdomen I was telling you about. I know we can't see it all that well. But they are just gorgeous. It's a shame that they are so fossorial because you don't get to enjoy those beautiful colors very much. All right, well, not as much trouble as I expected, but that's a good thing. I know it's going to like its new enclosure a whole lot more. Is it hot in here or is it just me? Whew. Now this next one is the um, 
Pederoscodra maculata, which is commonly known as a Togo starburst baboon. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the only tarantula in my collection that actually makes me nervous. And uh, believe it or not, this is actually the first old world tarantula that I bought. And uh, it took a lot of convincing of my wife to allow me to get it. And I actually ended up getting two. And uh, they are very, very unpredictable very very defensive and do not make a great beginner species so i cut my teeth on old world with the heteroscoda maculata and uh, i think it was a good teacher for me because it gave me everything that you can expect from a feisty old world tarantula they can teleport they are super fast they climb and they only have like two stages Either when you go into their enclosure, they're gonna go straight down and hide and try to get away from you. And when they feel like they're not secure, they're gonna pop right back out. And uh, I've had them do that. Uh, I had the, a male and that male has since passed because it, it matured and, and passed away. But um, with that male, I was actually showing it to a friend and I moved the cork bark back just a little bit and the thing just shot straight up and out of the enclosure and I had to chase it down. Didn't have a catch cuff handy or anything, so it was quite an ordeal. So yeah, um, I don't recommend this as a, as a beginner tarantula. Um, I even don't recommend it as a beginner into old world, but I had to start somewhere and it was a good learning experience for me because everything that I've had after this has been nowhere near as crazy as this particular species. So um, hopefully everything will go as planned. I've got a few more years of experience. I've got some more tools and things that I could use that I didn't know about before. So um, as you can tell, I've probably put this off way too long. I've had her in this enclosure ever since she outgrew her small enclosure that I first had her in and I haven't moved her since. So she's webbed this up really, really good. And she's been due, she's, she's been due for an enclosure for a long time. And uh, I finally bought this, but I bought it over the summer, as you can tell. I am not looking forward to this. I've put it off and I've put it off. I was gonna do it one night, but I was too tired and this is not a species I wanna mess with when I'm tired. So, um, yeah, let's get right to it. Beautiful species, that chalky white color is what made me fall in love with it. But as beautiful as they are, they are extremely crazy. So here we go, let's, let's hope this goes well. All right, so let's start out by giving you a look at her. Let me move this out of the way. <clears throat> So there she is, and not a very big species, but you can see she's webbed up the entire inside there. She's got little tunnels going everywhere, and she's got a little teeny tiny piece of cork bark in there, a cork tube that I had originally put in there for her, and she doesn't even use that anymore because she has outgrown it. Um, she's nice and fat and probably due for a molt soon, but... Um, yeah, let's see if I can go ahead and get her out of here without too much trouble. What I'm worried about is um, tearing up her webbing because when I go to tear up that webbing, she will probably try to bolt and this is not a tarantula that I want loose in the house. So I'm gonna do my best to do that. If she starts to try to bolt, then I'll probably abandon that idea and then I'll use the catch cup and try to get it the best that I can. <clears throat> so here goes. All right, so let's test things out first. I'm gonna put this in here, and she is not moving. Good sign. And I'm gonna tear up some of the webbing. Okay, so she's moving down. And she's getting a little bit worried. Once she feels threatened she is going to be all fangs and legs and she's really going to scare the mess out of me. The only thing I don't want is for her to just take off and bolt out of here. If I can keep her in here then I'm good. All right. So this, whoop, 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 there we go. She's coming out. Yeah, as soon as she feels a little bit of an edge 
that she can take advantage of, she will shoot out. Mm -hmm. Kind of stinks because she's right next to that cork tube and that won't allow me to put the catch cup down. All right, so let's see if I can use the tongs to get some of that webbing out of the way. I am nervous. <laughs> She's being good right now, but anything could set her off. All right, let's see if I can get this webbing out of here. Looks like I'm running out of space on my memory. So hold on a sec. All right, I am back. Let's see if we can continue this. I really want to get this webbing out of here. She's being very good, surprisingly. But I can't take my guard off of her. Ooh, she is simply just not moving, which is good. But I'm really, really worried about getting this cork bark out. Or at least out of the way. so good yeah I don't like that she's wedged over there so I am gonna try something see if I can put the lid on and maybe get her to move or move the cork bark so I know this doesn't really make for good video, but I'm very, very worried about her moving and bolting out of here. All right, so she's gone to the bottom. Yeah, I'm starting to see fangs. She's really looking defensive now. Oh, I got that out. That was a big worrisome factor there. So now that I've got that out, it'll probably be a lot easier to capture her. She seems to be wanting to hold her ground, which is good because that means I can take that catch cup and just put it right on top of her. And hopefully that's as far as I need to go. All right, so here we go again. All right. So let's see if I can get her in this catch cup. She's giving me a threat posture and holding her ground, so that's pretty good. As long as I can contain her right there. Let me nudge her from behind. All this webbing. Give me a lot of padding there. Not good. All right. Come 
on, girl. Climb up the side. All right, I got her cupped. Let's see if I can get this webbing out, and that'll make things a whole lot easier. Oh, don't, don't, don't. All right. Okay. Ooh, so there she is. All right. Not too bad. Let me just move this here. And get this out of the way. <laughs> so I'm in a pretty good spot right now because now that I've got her cupped in here, I can easily move her to the enclosure. But I'm still not out of the woods because, like I said, they have a tendency to bolt and take off. And uh, so when I have this enclosure open, my hope is that I can prod her and make her go back into the enclosure and then hide it somewhere in the cork bark and everything will be good. Um, but sometimes they have a tendency to go and just keep going. So she might run into the enclosure and then run around and right back out. So that's another thing that I'm worried about. So hopefully things will go well, but keep your fingers crossed that she doesn't bolt on me. All right, so I've got the camera set down low so I can get a good vantage point of this. Um, hopefully it's not gonna be in my way just a little bit. All right, that way I don't have to worry about closing this. Okay, so we're good there. All right, so I've got the cork bark all set up in here. I've got a nice spot for her to go behind. Hopefully she'll take advantage of that and uh, won't try to take off too far. So I'm going to try to... Oh, gosh, that is something you don't want to do. All right, I'm gonna try to coax her in and onto the cork, cork, cork bark. Can't even talk, so nervous. And I'm making stupid mistakes, so that is not something you wanna do when you're dealing with a feisty tarantula like this. All right, come on, girl. Come on. You can stand a little bit. All right, you're gonna go down, come on. Go down, go down. Come on. She is stubborn. She does not wanna move. She just keeps trying to go right back up into the uh, top of the bottle there. Come on, babe. There you go. Turn around. Turn around. Nothing for you up here. Turn around. All right, we're getting her down. Little by little. Come on. Come on. I am really surprised that she is not throwing up a threat posture right now. Um, maybe she's calmed down in her old age, but when she was young, she was all fangs. All right, here we go, here we go, come on. Keep going. Keep going. All right, turn around, turn around. Come on, don't try to climb back up, no. Oh, goodness. Come on, no, 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 no. Go the other way.
<laughs> she just sticks and does not want to move. Okay, we're turning around. That's a good sign. Let's go. Please don't bolt. Please don't bolt. Oh. And we're in. Ah. And sure enough, she's finding the uh, most secure spot she could find and is hiding herself back there. All right, so hopefully you got to see her. Whew. All right, well, she is in her new enclosure and things went much smoother than I anticipated. It took a while to get her out of the catch cup, but um, I would rather spend an hour trying to get her out of the catch cup safely and smoothly than chasing her around the room. Um, so yeah, you know, it just goes to show that with the proper handling uh, techniques and using the proper tools, you can take even the most feisty tarantula and move it successfully without too much effort. Um, I, I'll admit I'm sweating, <laughs> I'm shaking a little bit, and uh, I feel a little bit better because this is my feistiest tarantula. This is the, the most unpredictable tar tarantula that I have, and uh, this went rather smoothly. She is a little bit more calm in her old age. I don't know if that's something that's gonna last or it just happened today, um, but I have seen her bolt around the little enclosure just for me feeding and things like that. So, you know, she there's no telling with her. She's very, very unpredictable. Beautiful tarantula. I'm sorry you didn't get to see more of her because she is a beautiful chalky color and she's got these these creamy browns on her with these black speckles and stuff. And uh, you know, there's just a gorgeous tarantula and it's completely opposite of, you know, a lot of the tarantulas that you see are that are real colorful and got these blues and reds and so on. And she is just very light colored and um, just an interesting shade of like almost a creamy white color, which is which is really neat. So I've never seen another tarantula like it. So that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I do have a Redbubble store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. I have a link below in the description. And uh, any of the proceeds that come from that Tarantula Haven merchandise will go directly to help grow and support this channel. And don't forget my wife's Etsy store where she sells the uh, spider ornaments. We now have the Halloween spider ornaments. Please go check that out. And those proceeds will also help go to support this channel. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.